Hello and welcome to the Art of Caro. In this video I'm going to be making a jacket. I've noticed a lack of uh, outer layers uh, or like second layers uh, that match the rest of my um, me made <laughs> wardrobe and uh, uh, I'm going to be starting on that a bit. Uh, this one is going to be a bit of a thinner second layer so it is a jacket uh, but it's not like um, an outerwear jacket it's more like a middle layer uh, that you can then put a coat over uh, and I'm going to be making this 90s 50s uh, vintage reproduction pattern uh, by Simplicity it's uh, Simplicity 8747 and I'm going to be the lo uh, be making the long sleeved option. Uh, and for my fabrics, I'm going to be using this lovely blue cotton muslin with gold flecks on it. Uh, and I'm going to flatline that with this uh, cotton flannel from a sheet I bought at a discount and uh, then instead of, of using fusible interfacing which uh, won't work with the crinkled muslin especially with the gold dots you can't apply that much heat, much heat to it I'm going to be using a old sheet that's really tightly woven um, and I think that's going to work I'm going to use it as sew-in interfacing I, hopefully it will work out well. Let's get started. After I cut out all the pieces from the fabric, I basted them together. Uh, hand basting for the pieces that was uh, flat lined with uh, the outer fabric and the lining. And machine basting for the ones that was, uh, that was the outer fabric and the interfacing. I have finished cutting out all the pieces, which took me forever because there are a whole bunch of them and I had to cut out each piece twice. Uh, for the major pieces I could cut a piece out of the lining and then out of the outer fabric and then I basted them together by hand. And for the Facing pieces, I uh, basted the interfacing to them using the sewing machine. I don't know why I made it different between the different types, but I did, and that felt like it made sense to me at the moment. Uh, yeah, so these pieces are all interfaced. Even uh, you're only meant to interface one piece of the collar uh, but uh, since the muslin fabric isn't very sturdy by itself uh, I thought it could use a bit more structure so I interfaced both pieces uh, of it instead of just one yeah and these are like the main pieces uh, for the jacket and these are the uh, these are the cuffs of the jacket that you're going to attach down here on the jacket. I think the jacket is it's cut really interesting. Uh, you have this slit in it, uh, so uh, the opening of the cuff ends up on a different place on the sleeve than the underarm seam. So that's the first time for me. So I've already done it on the mock-up, but it's going to be interesting on the actual garment. So now I'm going to get started sewing it all together. I started out by stay stitching just within the seam allowance of the neck for the front piece and the back piece. Then I pinned together the front piece and the side front piece. 
uh, it was a bit fiddly uh, around the curves uh, but it uh, went okay as long as I took my time and wasn't too impatient with it And then I sewed those together using a straight seam. Sorry about my cat, he's really chatty right now. Uh, then I uh, trimmed the seam allowance just for the portion of the seam allowance that's for the lining. Cut off the notches and then I cut into the waist. Uh, just in the seam allowance making sure not to go too far then I turn over the seam allowance for the outer fabric around the trimmed off piece of uh, seam allowance and then I zigzag the seam allowance and I make this for uh, both the uh, seam allowances that's left then I press them flat using low heat and uh, extra uh, water from uh, a spray bottle uh, to not melt the gold spots on this fabric. I have to be really careful and on the outside I make sure I have a pressing cloth between the fabric and the iron to make sure I don't damage the gold dots. Then I pin the seam allowance to keep it in place and then I baste it down and I do this for everything that I'm later on going to have to hand stitch uh, so I don't injure myself on the needles then I uh, stitch down the seam allowance uh, making sure to just catch the lining fabric uh, and then I move on to pinning the back pieces with the side back pieces again it's really fiddly around the curves and uh, I have to be really careful to make sure everything is aligned prop uh, properly but uh, as long as I'm being patient it's not that big of a deal and this fabric is also slightly stretchy in itself, so it's not that hard to make it lie as it's supposed to. Then I'm uh, stitching those together using a straight stitch. And clipping into the seam allowance. And then I'm finish uh, finishing off the seam allowance uh, the same way as I did previously. And this is the method I'm going to be using for all my seam allowances that's um, uh, going to be raw, so um, uh, according to the pattern, uh, unless I show you otherwise. So I'm not going to repeat it too much here so <laughs> you get annoyed by it. Again, sorry about my cat, he's really chatty. Then I'm pinning together my center back seam. And this one wasn't that difficult to pin, it was more straight than the other ones. And then I'm stitching that seam. And then I'm pinning together the side seams and the shoulder seams. Then I'm stitching the shoulder seams from the neck opening and out to the armhole and then the side seam from the armholes down. Then I'm pinning down the waist tape. I didn't have a gross grain ribbon. I just had a, a cotton tape that was um, it's a bit more of a sturdy cotton tape. So I used that, I don't know if that's going to cause a problem later on, but I didn't want to buy something new um, at that point because <laughs> it, uh, 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 it was starting to get close to uh, 
Christmas shopping time, so I wanted to use what I had uh, whenever possible. And after I had measured out my tape, I stitched it down by hand at the seam allowances. And this uh, and this uh, cotton tape is covering up the raw seams that I clipped open at the waistline, so I don't have to worry about any raw seams. Then I pin together my two collar pieces. Um, along the curved edge where I'm supposed to stitch them. And then I stitch them along the curved edge without uh, the notches. Then I trimmed off the seam allowance, rather narrowly, and then I could cut the notches into the curved part of the collar. Then I turned the collar the right sides out, making sure to push out the seam line to make it neat before I took it to iron and pressed it out then I pinned the raw edge of the collar and basted it down on the machine using long stitches then I pinned down the collar to the bodies portion of the jacket and basted it by hand. I felt that would be easier than basting by machine. I felt it would be a lot of seam lines at the same point so I didn't want to do too much. Then I started to pin the facing pieces together which um, I felt was a bit uh, uh, complicated after a while because I pinned all the pieces at the same time and then stitched them so I had this uh, uh, big uh, sort of circular thing <laughs> to move around and I was so scared that I was going to uh, warp it so it wasn't uh, aligned properly but uh, I managed to keep it straight so that was good. <laughs> And then I stitched together the facing. Then I trimmed away the notches on the seam allowance. And started pressing them open. Then I folded down the inner part of my facing and I'm folding down, I don't know, 5 millimeters, 8 millimeters. I wasn't super careful about it. Um, there is directions in the sewing, sewing instructions, but I figured it didn't have to be precisely that, so I just went sort of close to that. Then I stitched down that part I had folded up. Then I pinned the facing to the bodice portion of the jacket. And this was also a bit fiddly. Uh, there's a lot of portions about uh, the, during the making of this jacket that aren't exactly difficult, but they are fiddly. So the construction is fairly easy. You just have to be patient so I don't think this is a project for someone who's um, um, 
who doesn't like fiddly stuff. Uh, fortunately, I do like working with fiddly things, so uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, but you had to be kind of patient with it. And um, somewhere around the, uh, the curves took a bit here. And then I'm trimming down the seam allowance all the way around and then I'm <laughs> grading the neck edge when I'm trimming the seam allowance which, which is the first time for me uh, so that was um, uh, new but it wasn't difficult so I just have to be mindful of what I was doing so I didn't uh, do it wrongly <laughs> And, and then I folded uh, out the facing and the seam allowance, so the seam allowance was um, the same way as the facing and then I uh, top stitched that or like under stitched that but I made it from the outside so it's a top stitch but it's actually an under stitch so yeah. <laughs> uh. And after I had understitched the facing, I had to uh, understitch the points uh, just by the color by hand because I couldn't get my machine to, to work around that part, so I hand stitched that down. And then I pressed down the facing and uh, pinned it to keep it in place. And this bit was a bit annoying uh, to get it uh, to uh, lie properly for the part that I was supposed to press, uh, but uh, not accidentally press it weirdly on another part of the jacket. So I had to work on that for a little bit, especially around the part that sticks out in the back that was a bit difficult because it's a curve then I basted down the facing along the inner edge then I stitched down the facing by hand and I'm using um, not uh, super large stitches but but not very small either just sort of middle ground then I reinforce the dots around the, the sleeve just stitching back and forward forward over them uh, a bit and then I'm using a ladder stitch to pull together my darts in the sleeve it's going backward and forward I've got I've done a lot of darts recently uh, this method is really good for uh, keeping them together um, so I'm just basting them down like this and then I'm going to stitch them on the machine and when I'm stitching them on the machine I'm back stitching at the beginning and then when I come to the point I'm just going straight over the edge. Then I'm taking out the basting uh, in the dart. And then I'm making a knot by hand at the point of the dart. And then I'm just taking those uh, uh, leftover threads and uh, putting them on a needle and just putting them inside of the dart uh, and cutting the threads. Then I'm cutting into the markings of the dart and then cutting the dart open following the instructions that comes with the uh, pattern. And 
and then I'm pressing them open with my fingers and taking them to the ironing board and pressing them with the iron making sure they lie nice and flat And then I'm stitching gathering stitches at the elbow on one side of the sleeve and then I'm stitching and then I'm stitching two lines of gathering stitches at the top of the sleeve following the markings. Then I'm pinning together the um, under seam of the sleeve it just has one <laughs> one seam uh, and then I'm just easing uh, together that part that I sewed gathering stitches on at the elbow um, just it shouldn't show any gatherers on the on the sleeve later on, so I'm being careful, uh, especially now when I'm stitching together the sleeve, uh, to make sure that all the gathered portion are on the seam allowance uh, side. Then I'm reinforcing the dots on the uh, uh, cuff facing, and then I'm stitching the lower portion of the cuffs and clipping into the cuff after the markings and pressing the seam allowance there and then I'm folding up maybe 8 millimeters of uh, the, the cuff uh, on the side that's going to be needs to be finished off and then I'm sewing that down on the machine Then I'm turning my sleeve right side out uh, and pinning the cuff facing uh, right sides together with the lower portion of the sleeve. And it's a bit of a tricky shape here but I got it to work. <laughs> As I've said repeatedly you just have to be a bit patient when you're doing it. And then I'm stitching the cuff to the sleeve got a lot of easier uh, a lot easier when I removed that thing from the sewing machine and then I'm turning up the cuff uh, on the inside uh, and then I realized I had to do something about the raw seams of that dart so I used a different cotton tape and I measured it measured it out and then basted it over the raw seams of the dart to cover it in the pattern this uh, dart is left raw but I didn't feel comfortable with that uh, maybe if I had some more tightly woven fabric but I don't so uh, I just put this piece of cotton tape over the raw edge then I hand stitch that down on either side of the um, um, tape making sure to just catch the lining and the seam allowance not going on the outside of the sleeve and then I'm pressing the cuff, making my edges all nice and crisp. And then I'm basting down the upper portion of the cuff. Just to keep it in place and then I'm hand stitching that to the lining. Then I'm turning the sleeve right sides out and removing some basting and turning up the cuff. I 
took a little bit of fiddling to get it to lay as I wanted it to. And then I made French tacks <laughs> to keep the uh, folds of the cuff in the right place. And this is the first time I've made French tacks, but they weren't that complicated. I just stitched up and down uh, from the cuff to the sleeve and left um, maybe two centimeter uh, gap there and then I made knots around those um, threads. I don't know if I'm explaining it properly but um, yeah so as I said it's my first time doing this so I'm not exactly an expert. <laughs> But I got it to work, and I'm happy with how it looks. Then I pinned my sleeve to the arm side opening, making sure to match up the notches and the dots and the markings and all of that. And then I have to ease the sleeve into the arm side uh, and then I'm being super careful to make sure there are no gathering on the outside where it's going to be noticeable uh, all the portion that's that looks gathered are in the seam allowance but on the outside when I turn it out later on it's just uh, nicely rounded then I stitch together the sleeve and the bodice portion and then I'm stitching another line, uh, sort of in the middle of the seam allowance, trimming off my seam allowance uh, just above that second line. And then just because I want to be extra secure, I uh, zigzag stitch around the arm side, uh, encasing my seam allowance. Then I removed all the basting. which took forever <laughs> so much basting stitches then I figured out how I wanted my buttons to be placed uh, using this guide I wasn't completely sure if I wanted to fold over the jacket in this direction but then I decided that that would work so I put my guide on there and I had to pin it down to keep it in place and then I started to mark out where the buttonholes would go and I had found buttons that was the same size as the instructions recommended so I could just draw out the um, the buttonholes after the guide, I didn't have to make any changes. And then I started to sew the buttonholes and I sewed them all by hand this time. Uh, they, uh, the method, method I use for making buttonholes is that I first, after knotting my thread on the underside of the fabric, I go up and then I make some back stitches all the way around the, the buttonhole. Then I cut open my buttonhole, being really careful. Um, and then I'm testing it with, with my button to make sure it goes through nicely, but it isn't too open. And then I wake whip stitches all around the edge of that buttonhole and then when I'm done with that I make buttonhole stitches all the way around and I feel this makes the buttonholes extra secure and uh, I find this easier than using a machine then I measure out where I need to place my buttons and I do this, this both by using my guide and I'm also then, uh, and I don't think, think I filmed it, but I lay the, the other part of the 
jacket where I made the buttonholes over this part and making sure that uh, the markings line up and then I start stitching on the buttons So I'm done with the jacket and I think it looks really good. I'm uh, very happy with it. It's uh, elegant and really pretty and it has just the right amount of sparkle, uh, I think. And it's comfy and it's warm but not, but not too warm. Um, it's a good uh, indoor garment. So it's not something you can wear um, outdoors in winter without something else over it but um, it will will be good for spring I think and summer it will be great for uh, and uh, I don't really have to uh, take it off inside unless it starts to get really warm when there's a lot of people and stuff like that it's a little bit restrictive in the shoulders but not too much it's just that the, the whole thing rides up quite a bit when I raise my arms but I can still raise them so I don't feel trapped in it uh, and I could put in a couple of shoulder pads I still haven't decided if I wanted to uh, it's optional in the pattern uh, I think it looks good without them but it might look better with them uh, but I can do that in the future if I feel like it so the garment wasn't very difficult to put together uh, it looks more complicated when you first uh, start uh, cutting out the pieces and trying to figure out how to put together but just uh, go along step by step by the instructions and it's, it's fairly straightforward uh, you just have to be a bit patient at certain parts because it's a bit fiddly uh, and also a bit um, uh, hard with the curves and the <laughs> angles and stuff like that just be patient and it's uh, it, the end result is quite spectacular I think and uh, it's um, a really nice jacket I think yeah so uh, much more simple than uh, it looks at first glance um, some new things I uh, got to experience with this was um, the uh, French tack um, for the cuffs. I'd never done this before and that was um, not very hard to learn but uh, it has um, um, a very nice look to it uh, and I also has, uh, have never done as large of a facing as it is for this as well as the grading for cutting down the seam allowance for the color was also new new to me so I felt I learned a bit while making this and uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed it oh and the cuffs uh, the way to make the cuffs for this was also new to me like you made the sleeve uh, slimmer <laughs> uh, as well as uh, making the cuffs like in the same steps sort of so that was uh, interesting uh, and um, I like that it makes the 
the points of the uh, cuffs uh, end up on the sides of the arm instead on the uh, of the underarm seam. Uh, it's it's very really nice. And that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And you may want to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future content. May the stars shine upon your faces and have a glorious day. Thank you and goodbye for now.